what are your thoughts today as you're heading out here? This is such an important issue for the, not only the Stonington area, but really all along the coast. I'll tell you, it almost chokes me up to see people gathering here. Um, there's unprecedented alignment in support of lobstering. And lobstering is pretty unique. It's um, owner-operator, everyone's their own businessman. Um, these community, we have made the laws so that there are lobstermen in every small harbor along the coast. And this is an existential threat to that way of life and to that type of business. Um, and it's an existential threat for no reason. And that's the thing that is such a travesty. For the people that really haven't been following this too closely, what exactly has happened? I know NOAA is creating a lot of new rules aimed at protecting the right whale, and I don't think there's any lobsterman that's against protecting any creature out there. Um, but in this case, they believe it's going too far. Yeah, <clears throat> let's be really clear. One of the things about lobstering is that they've always taken care of the ocean that they work in. Um, no one's perfect, but that's the culture of the lobster fishery going back hundreds of years. So. Um, so no one wants to hurt the right whale. However, um, this, the, the, love, the right whales have not been in this area due to changes in the ocean. But the science has not caught up with that. And so the biological opinion that National Marine Fisheries Service has put forward to try to meet the very demanding standards of the Endangered Species Act um, are behind. And as a result, even National Marine Fisheries Service admits that if the lobstermen so-called um, reduce risk by 98%, it still probably will not save the right whale. The issues are with the shipping industry and especially with Canada. It's very difficult for the U.S. to affect what happens in Canada, and you have, um, but these people should not be put out of business for that reason. Yeah. What is your biggest fear? They're talking about uh, things like ropeless traps, things like that. They sound good, I guess, in principle, but what, what is your biggest fear? What's going to happen to the people around here? Well, my biggest fear is that they won't be able to make a living out of mind. And um, that somehow in the changes that are made, it disrupts this balance of local, small-scale owner-operator fishing. It would change the change the face of the coast if these people were not out here. It would completely change the, the face of the coast. The coast would be left with this vacuum of billions of dollars in, in secondary effects of this very productive uh, business and all those people who would need somewhere else to go and um, I don't know, there would be a giant sucking sound, which might be tourism, and, mm -hmm. and we would lose something inestimable. Yeah, really, we'll send a shockwave to all these other businesses that they support the lobster industry. When you look at this town, the school, the, the, I mean, there isn't anything that isn't supported by lobstermen. I can tell that you feel this deeply. It's not just as a former commissioner and as a scientist and all this, but... I can hear it in your voice. You, you care about this. Sure do. What do you think? Is there any hope? What, what, what do you think is the biggest hope for these people? I actually have some optimism um, in the last month. Um, number one, you've got this kind of crowd. You've got this kind of, of real showing of support and alignment. Um, number two, the the um, solicitor, former Solicitor General Paul Clement, who was hired by Maine Lobstermen's Association and the other mm -hmm. parties that are part of to the suit. Clement is really knows his stuff. He's the top person that could have been gotten. And, um, you know, he's taken cases on the opposite side for the government during the Bush administration. He knows the law. He knows, and, and so we could not have a better person in our court. And... Um, Third of all, lobstermen have been through things like this in the past. In the 90s, the federal government wanted to put their rules all the way to three miles. Um, they would have consolidated the industry, 
um, we would have had dragging for lobsters, we would have had no protection for V-notch, no protection for oversized measure. Lobstermen doggedly fought that. Uh, Ed Blackmore from Stonington um, was the head of the Maine Lobstermen's Association, and he, um, and then his, then other lobstermen, and a group of us, got the current laws put out to the 1A line, and as a result, we have the f the fishery we have. It's working. It is, and that's the type of effort that I'm seeing pull together. The other thing is, and in this time of political fracturing, um, we have alignment from the entire congressional delegation. The governor has given a substantial portion of the very small discretionary money she has f and supported further money through the budget for the lobstermen's legal fight. And, um, and then you have all the lobstering groups pulling together. So that's no small thing. <laughs>